Hey, everybody, it's the coach. Welcome to the special Saturday edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Coming up, fourth-year quarterback Jameis Winston and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers take on Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys. So with that, let's head over to the heart of Texas, massive AT&T Stadium in Arlington. On the call, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Coach, EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Lone Star State and the very mammoth AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Obviously, they do everything big here in Dallas, and the introduction of the Cowboys, no exception. They're set for football in Big D, as their guys will do battle with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gunn, and Charles kickoff moments away. Quickly, what are you watching in this one? The offensive line for both teams, because both teams have a terrific pass rush. They've got to keep their passers upright. If they have a chance to do that, they can both thrive on offense and move the ball downfield. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So out come the Bucks now for their first drive. It'll be Jameis Winston leading this unit, the fourth-year quarterback from Florida State. And there's little doubt that he's looking for a big-time bounce-back season in 2018. Everyone expected a big year in 2017, but the team won just three times in his 13 starts. Some of that, you got to put on their defense. They struggled, but there are too many inopportune turnovers that continue to plague him. The first carry here for Jaquiz Rogers. And he'll get this up over the 25 to the 26. Sean Lee, the pro bowler there for the tackle. And a peek now at the offense for Tampa Bay. And my eyes immediately go to Mike Evans. Four straight 1,000-yard seasons to begin his career. His numbers may have dropped a little bit in 2017, but he commands respect from every defense with his height and his ability to run downfield and make a big catch. Let's go now. Now a second down throw for Winston. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Big O.J. Howard, his intended target. And it's third down. And a look at the defense for the Cowboys. I think most people locked in on Byron Jones when he came out of UConn at the NFL Combine where he darn near jumped out of the stadium because of his vertical leap. But there's so much more to his game than that. Played cornerback and safety in college, and they can use that same ability to move him around in the NFL in order to create great matchups on defense for Dallas. This defense looking for an early stop. This is third down and six. From the shotgun, it's Winston. He's got Evans. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. First down, Winston. And the Cowboys' pressure gets there this time for the sack. David Irving able to get him for a loss of about three. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. So following the sack, they'll try to change their fortune here on second and 13. Ready. Ready. 
To throw is Winston. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him? without weakening our overall defense. You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. Call it a gain is seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. Defense had a chance to get off the field here in the opening drive, couldn't do it. I know that we go into these meetings with coaches, and sometimes maybe we can get, you know, a little bit numb because they're always going to talk about how important third down is, aren't they? Offense and defense. In this case, one capitalized, and the other, as you said, had a chance to get off the field and didn't get it done. A couple of first downs has the football positioned at the 43 as they come up first and 10. Hey, right, to the back. right back to him on first down. Tyrone Crawford in on the tackle. So not much to speak of scoring wise in this first quarter of play. Nothing, nothing, our score. We're back to Arlington in just a moment. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you and you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. It's the Bucks in possession of the football as we begin the second quarter. They face a second and seven to start things out. And on the ground they go with a running back. And he gets it down to the 32. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. And they'll go on the ground. Now that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. That loss of three, a rare stumble on a promising drive. Here's second and 13. Two minutes remain in a scoreless first half. We're back to Arlington right after this timeout. A reminder coming up at halftime, we'll check in with our Jonathan Coachman. He'll have highlights and analysis of the first half, and our highlights will likely be on the defensive side of the football here. Scoreless game. They'll try to throw now, Winston. He's got the hook up here to Deshaun Jackson. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. So two of two on third down conversions on this drive, and now they face a third and three here. Ready. 
From the gun, Winston. He finds Humphreys. Winston and Humphreys connecting there for a Tampa Bay first down. Third and four, he did just enough. I mean, just enough to move the chains. And that's all you're looking for, right? Just want to keep the drive moving. You don't need the big play there. Just get to that marker that you described, and he was able to do just that. First time into the red zone for the Buccaneers. First and 10 at the 19. Ready. From the red zone now, Winston. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The intended receiver that time, Adam Humphreys. And that'll bring up second down. Well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. They really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. They'll throw again. Winston. And the pressure gets there, and Winston goes down. Randy Gregory in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. Enough takes a start to have a good drive. Quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? Now, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. Maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. As they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. Winston needing a big play after the sack as he leads the Bucks up on third and long. Jameis to throw it. And he's got a man. It's the tight end Howard complete. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. Ready. Black, Black, got Working out of the gun, Winston. And Evans hauls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. Mike Evans, a seven yard touchdown grab. And the Bucks take the ball down the field and score on their opening drive. And that touchdown gives them a touchdown lead before they attempt the extra point. What a great way to end the half. Yeah, great job to put themselves in front. And now, see on the sideline, special teams defense scrambling, saying we want to preserve this for the final moments of this second quarter. Here's Chandler Catanzaro for the extra point. Extra point good by Catanzaro. And it's now a 7-0 game. That drive, a long one, spanning 15 plays. And it ends with a touchdown for the Bucks.
Cat and Zero out now as he'll kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. So here are the Cowboys now ready to go on offense for the first time. They'll be brought out by their 24-year-old quarterback in his third year now at the helm of the Cowboys, Dak Prescott. The numbers he put up as a rookie, outstanding. But were they really, truly sustainable? Remember, they were 13-3 and as rookie season. They ended up going 9-7 in 2017. How about they went from four interceptions in 2016 as a rookie to 13 his second year? These are numbers that you didn't expect to stay the same. I do expect Dak Prescott to continue to get better and better as a quarterback in the NFL. On first and ten, Prescott. And there is Amari Cooper, his first catch. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion. So here's second and four. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. First down, Prescott. His throw incomplete. Cole Beasley, the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. Well, we got a second here, Charles. Let's look back to some of those crazy finishes in week seven of the NFL last week. I mean, it seemed like every game had a wild finish. It certainly did. Dallas, Washington, Brett Maher off the upright from 52 yards following a questionable penalty against his long snapper that moved the ball back five yards. How about Cleveland, Tampa Bay? Cleveland claws his way back in. And then Tampa Bay wins the ball game with Chandler Catanzaro kicking the big field goal from 59 yards in overtime. Remember, he missed a 40-yarder in regulation. Justin Tucker missed an extra point. That's the headlines in and of itself. His first miss in the NFL. And New Orleans gets away with a victory. And New England, Chicago. Chicago throws the Hail Mary at the end of the game. Kevin White, 54 yards. Offside. He needed Defense. 55. Yeah. Stopped at the one yard. I don't think I've ever seen a Hail Mary come that close but not get in. And that one was relatively easy to see. I noticed that from up Still here. First yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot, does it? Sometimes you get multiples. What I always love on these offsides is when each side points at the other. Hey, you <laughs> did it. No, you did it. They deciphered that one correctly. Following the penalty, it's first and five, and you got to think offensively, all kinds of options. To the air again, Prescott. Looking and finding Allen Hearns. Now a signal and a timeout call as it comes with nine seconds to go in this first half of play. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action.
So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. From the right hash, this from 45 yards away. And his kick is right there. It's good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. So the three points here, they're still down, but they put somewhat of a dent into that lead going into the break. Anything helps when you're trying to chip away at a lead, but they do know that they're going to need a little bit better effort in the second half. The lead cut to just four as they kick it away and turn things over to their D. Rodgers on the return. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. play of the first half barring a penalty as they come up on first and ten. Ready. Black 25. Cut. Final play of the half here. Winston. He's going to let this go deep for Jackson. And that is incomplete. So we have reached halftime here with the visiting Buccaneers out on top. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This game's had a little bit of everything thus far and certainly plenty to look forward to as the teams are right back out there for the second half. So we'll get right back out there as well as we'll turn it back over to Brandon Godden. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. That's fielded in the end zone, and no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out come the Cowboys now as they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They're down here, but very much in this game. What's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. Here's Elliott, and he'll get this one up to the 26. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing, but with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. They go to Elliott again. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 down at the 39. 12 yards there as they move the chains. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral, also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. So after a good run by Zeke, another first and 10. Four down, four down. Here we go. 
Prescott on first down. Wide open receiver complete. And he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. That goes for a gain of 31. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So the big play has him all the way down to the 30 now for first and 10. A first down carry by Elliott. Shreds the tackle. And now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage. The pro bowler Brent Grimes brings him down. Well, at least he was able to break that initial contact or it could have been a loss. Yeah, give credit to the defensive player, though. What did he do? Made him slow down, slow up his feet, and allowed the rest of the guys to get there to finish him off. The stop for no gain brings up second and 10 from the 20. Again, it's Elliott. He'll be stopped short of the 25. The nice move couldn't free him. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. He's going to go up top for the end zone. And that one incomplete. They try to sneak in a deep ball with the clock running down, but to no avail as time will expire on this third quarter of play. Back now in Arlington. It's the Cowboys in possession of the football, but they trail here as we begin the fourth quarter of play. One score down, here we go. They're gonna go for it here on fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And he will go down, a Cowboys sack. Levante David leading the surge there. He drops him for a loss of six. So the failure to convert no doubt really hurts, but this one's not over. A good chunk of time on the clock and the timeouts. Yeah, not only do they have the timeouts, as you just noted, they're going to get an extra one with the two-minute warning, and that's going to help them big way. So in a sense, they have four timeouts in their pocket. The big thing, stopping them on defense now. They can't let them get a first down and make them use their timeouts and get a fresh set of downs. They've got to stop them right here, and if so, they've still got an opportunity. Winston and the Bucks take over now, first and 10 at the 33 yard line. Ready. Too late. Go. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. Now the objective there, I mean, yes, the positive gain, that's nice, but work some clock. Yeah, you're exactly right, but the problem for them. It's still within a possession, so they can't just sit on it running the ball. They'll have to find a way to throw it effectively as well. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. Not much there. Maybe a couple up to the 35. Time for a break. 
We're back to see what happens after this. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. They're facing a critical third down now as they try to hold on to this lead. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Ready, black, 22, let's go. On third down, Winston. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete, certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. A third down, he tried to stay in bounds, did all he could. He caught it, but was led a little bit too far. Yeah, and that's always difficult, isn't it? Because you know half of your body is trying to stay behind while the other half is reaching out, trying to catch the football. The top half worked. It was the bottom half that was in question. This challenge was initiated by the guys in New York taking a look at the play. Less than two minutes to go. Yeah, I'm sure the coach wanted to challenge it, so he's probably going to send the New York office a holiday card. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Ready. Black 22. Got, got. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. And whistles, and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. So they come up on second down, and they can get another run like we just saw. Would likely put an end to this thing. Ready. Move ready. And they'll run it here. And not even back to the line of scrimmage this time as they're on him quickly once more. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. The Bucks on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This will be third and six. And on the ground they go with a running back. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. As they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. Here's Brian Anger now, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. Dallas gets set to take the field. They had a great drive going last time. They were moving the ball, and then all of a sudden it just stalled out. 
So we'll see what they can do here, Charles. And it's always easy to second guess when you don't get it on a fourth down try. But they had to like the feeling that they had going on offense. They want to continue to see if they can capture that again on this drive and maybe get in the same position. Yeah, and that's, I mean, like I said, they were moving the football. It's not like they went four and out, so I don't think it's a deal where the offense doesn't have confidence. No, I agree with you totally on that one. If, if anything, they may have gained more confidence. Okay, they stopped us once. That's all right. Let's keep moving it. Make them do it again. It's caught right side of turns. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. He's back to throw. This one caught left side by Cooper. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. They'll look to throw. He's got the connection to Cole Beasley. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. Back to throw. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Nice play there and forced the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle, going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. He'll look to throw. A dump <laughs> off to Elliott. And he's going to get this inside the 30. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. And he clocks it with just over 30 seconds left. Back to throw. Drops it underneath to Elliott. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. They'll give him eight on the play. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. Here's Prescott. And that's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. So this defense, they looked a little shaky to start the drive, but bottom line, they're a play away from finishing it off. They rocked them a little bit on this drive, didn't they? But as you and I both know, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. They have a chance to end it right here. Down four late, got to go for it here on fourth down. Got to try it here, he's back to throw. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Bucks have just about wrapped up the victory. So they finally get their first trip to the red zone, and it ends with nothing. And that's what I'm going to focus on with you, because you teed it up really well. Finally get to the red zone. So there's got to be a little bit of frustration, because they haven't moved the ball as well as they wanted to all game. Now they get there, but we got to go for it because we don't know if we can get back here again. We don't know how many opportunities because they've been sputtering a little bit. Absolutely. At this stage in the second half, to get there and not get it for the first time, tough. Winston will kneel down, and that should be your ball game. Well, Charles, the old saying, the old cliche, if you will, points at a premium, that certainly applied here, didn't it? And that almost felt like opened up a time capsule, didn't it? Old school football, low scoring, close game. What a way to finish it up. You loved it, didn't you? You I loved did. the defense. I certainly did. Brought back the images of the game of old.
That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say so long from Big D.